getting prepped for all of our trussing. See, we got the little lift. That is so we can go up in between our trusses and then we utilize the mega deck for holding all of our materials and kind of working on the outside of the trusses. You ready, Zach? That ground is bumpy. Sorry. I'm just gonna put it on the edge of this lift, Greg. You can build a mount all the way out there? I'm worried about getting up on this. I th all right, go ahead. Go ahead, get up there. Now. Let me come up there with you. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Dang it, I, uh, I just pulled the next truss off the pile and it was the other end truss, so my bad. I don't know. I got a million things I'm always thinking about. I'm sorry, Greg. I pulled the next one off the pile, just trying to keep us moving forward. My bad, dude. As long as you're not mad at me. I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. I can handle disappointment. Hey, what's up guys? Good morning. Welcome back to the channel. Yesterday, we got all these walls framed up and we got that first bay of trusses on, but today the goal is to get all of the trusses and the rest of this wall framing so that we can start working on our overhangs. Steel should show up today for Metal Sales, which is the supplier that I've been using for about the last six, seven years, and they've always treated us really well. So I actually ordered this steel Monday, today's Wednesday. That is how quick of a turnaround they make happen for us because they're a great partner. So I'm excited for that so we can put color on this building as soon as we get those overhangs done and the building straightened out. So let's get into it and start hanging some trusses. This is just like kind of a temporary connection in a sense that we're going to be doing half inch through bolts top and bottom on this 15 and a half inch heel but this is going to give us our connection while we kind of frame the building it still allows us to move it you know a little bit that way when we go put our chains when we go put our chains on the structure we 
still have a little bit of movement. We don't want to lock it in just quite yet with our bolts until we know everything is perfectly straight. nice thing about having these two lifts is that the smaller MRT 260 fits right between our trusses that way we can come up here and Zach can nail the purlins off on this truss I do the connection on the truss that we just finished and then Greg's on the outside feeding us our purlin so it's very efficient and it's very safe it's a great way to do trusses purlins um, you know and like I said, you can be safe and efficient. This is what we're driving. We're hand driving these 60 pennies. Ring shank. It's one heck of a nail. Very hard to pull out. phone is it takes a good picture yeah the hdr on it is no, really it's, good it's, it's when it comes to like third party apps yeah that's the problem i think you're down zach like if i was to post a picture it'd probably look good but if it comes like with the videos not for you go we got our friends at metal sales here they've got a bunch of goodies for us including our steel obviously other goodies would be trim and fasteners we got filler strips that's our trim palette pretty cool metal sales has this uh, trailer they just roll it back Everything is protected while they're driving so we don't get all that salt and crap that's on the roads into our 
packaged steel, so that's nice. I mean, they do a good job of wrapping all the stuff up that matters, but good stuff. All right. in that corner there all right so here I'm at 114 and 3 8 so I'll go and hook that guy and we're 114 and a half so I need to I need to crunch 16. this dimension yeah I'm more like 7 16 um, so I want this to go up and you to go down just to hair hold that Okay, now I'm 7 sixteenths and 7 sixteenths. Okay, I like that. I feel better about that, knowing that it's square. Now we're good. So I just used math to get all those calculations figured out. And as long as you apply math correctly um, and your conditions are, you know, accurate, then math will never lie and that cut is like straight fire, perfect. Um, couldn't be any tighter. Uh, using that Martinez framing square makes cutting any pitched cut, so rafters or stairs, you know, any anything, uh, like super precise. And it's, I think it has a lot to do with the accuracy of those stair knobs, having those little gauges that tell you exactly where you're at. So when I gotta dial in a 412 pitch cut, I can put one at four, one at 12, in this case, I went 6 and 18 because it's still a factor of a 412 pitch slope. It gives me exact, exactly perfect uh, mark so I can make really nice cuts. Make sure that string zack is uh, out of our way. Yeah, you can just take it out for now. Yeah. Lift up break. Remember back in the day when we used to uh, lift these columns and set them in holes and stuff? Zach don't know about those days. The sack, you don't even know. Zach would probably cry. I'd cry if I had to do it again. Actually only cry though, because at this point I know what it could be, you know?
All right, so now that we have all of those trusses up, we got our purlins on, we're gonna work on finishing up some uh, bracing. So we got our wind ties, that's what Greg's working on back here. And then we're gonna put these chains up now. You guys have seen us do the chains and we do that so that we can really secure our building, lock it down. We don't like to use traditional lumber as our bracing. Lumber breaks, it moves. Uh, it's kind of a pain to put up, take down. Chains are super simple and we're able to just store them in our buckets and take them to the next job site. So maybe 50 bucks a chain. Uh, so I've got a lot invested in it, but the, you know, probably hundred buildings we've put up, they've paid for themselves in time and labor savings. And uh, they're really a great way to straighten out your building. I did do a video about how we utilize our chains. So go check that out. But yeah, I'll show you kind of what we do, just a real quick overview. So you can see this chain here coming off that door jam and that is going all the way up to our peak. So what that's doing is it's, as you can imagine, it's kind of locking down our peak and pulling it back towards this wall. And now that we're done trussing, we're gonna get another one up on the 24 foot truss in and pull back to that door jam column. And that's gonna kind of lock the building in from going end to end. And then you can see this chain here. How do you like those high-vis chains? Those are from Laclede chain, uh, American made. So that's great to support the American economy. And that is what we call a cross chain. So you can see it coming up to that bottom cord. And then there's one over here. So we've got this equal and opposite reaction going on and it's gonna lock in the building uh, side to side. Now, right now there's really not a whole lot of risk. Um, there's a lot of place for wind to go, so we're not that worried, but still it just helps us down the road install our steel when we've got these chains up and we can put them in right where we want it. And then as needed, once we get to straightening out the building, we can add more chains on those bottom cords and pull uh, that truss whichever way we want in order to straighten out our fascia. Super easy, super efficient, and is very accurate. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and cut my bevel boards or what we call our in-betweeners. It's basically that last purlin row on the face of our columns because there's really no way to run a purl in there. So we run our tails and then we've got that two by that goes across that opening. So we have something to fasten our steel to between the overhang fascia and that first purlin in that sits above our tail. Now the purpose of the bevel board, as you can see, is the bevel board has a bevel and that's a 412 pitch. So that's gonna match the pitch of our roof. And so when we install this flat against the column, it'll give us that nice 412 pitch. So the steel sets right on top of this, nice and clean. So I'll do that to all these boards. One of these goes in between every column. I don't know about you, but that's pretty impressive. That is a pile of sawdust. I just put a second battery in, but I think I did uh, 16 boards times eight. So that's 128 linear feet of two by four on a 18 and a half degree um, pitch. It's a lot of sawdust. Yeah, battery powered, who would have thought? It never skips a beat either. I like the DeWalt table saw, the Milwaukee's not bad. Um, I don't know, I just like the DeWalt. I feel like it's a little bit more robust than the Milwaukee. It's been out longer and been proven. But uh, I don't think you can go wrong with either of them. There, there you can see all the rips. It's a lot of sawdust. See, I feel like this time of the day, it's just like, man, why don't we just keep working, you know? I know, but like, why aren't we working now instead of in the morning? We are working now. Oh, good point. And we work in the morning. Are you good, dude? I'm working on it. Tell you what, I'll, I'll help out and I'll tell you what to do. That, that sounds like that'll really, really fix me. Do you flush up the bottom or the top of your fascia? Huh? Do you flush up the bottom or the top of your fascia? Which, oh, what fascia? The tail? Flush up the bottom or the top? I normally flush up the top. You confused? <laughs> no, I flushed up the top. Oh, okay. Because I was really confused and I was hoping you could shed some light on 
be the best practice for that. I put two screws in, sometimes three. Like if it if you don't get a good hold on one. I like it grew there. It's what happens when you put the patient on first. It really helps. Thanks for sharing that trick with me, Greg. Mm -hmm. Are there any other tricks that you've really, you know, learned over the years in trades that you yeah. can pass on? I learned to mind my own business. But like a good tradesman, I don't care. That's my secrets. Oh, you're one of those guys, huh? Wait, so do I put one of these stars here? Or what's the other star for? Hey, what? question for you. How did, uh, how'd our uh, joints end up? Joints? Yeah. Good. Good, man. This is exciting. I'm doing it for the very first time. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Gosh. 24 inches, is that the same as two foot? Here we're going on. Can I just kind of leave this here and then our screws on our steel will kind of get it together, or what would you do? Wait, what are you talking about? What do I do with this? That? Yeah. Like, what, what's the best practice? <laughs> well, probably nail it together on that one so they line, line up. So, can I just like, take one of these and nails? Then, no, no. So, do it, do it, do it, do it nail it together first. Lined up. Don't don't hit that one first. Sorry, I thought it was the best way to do it. I'm still learning, dude. You know what they say. Learn your mistakes. I hope I didn't make one. I'm sorry for being a rookie, dude. You know, if I was a little bit more seasoned, I could have. I could have uh, probably been a little quicker. Well, listen to me and mold that together first and start to get it fixed in first. Like, you probably dumb. Greg, you think it's okay if I move this now? I'm just gonna get it warmed up, okay? You know, Greg, this time around, maybe I'll try it your way. Maybe I'll nail them together first. Try it. I think I will. How'd I do, boss man? Find out, right? Did I cut it pretty good? You find out, huh? You want to bust through? Let's go. You help? Know? Mm. Look at this, dude. I've been learning, and I learned that if you help out your master, if you help out your master, that's how they know that you're learning. You know? <laughs> just want you to learn the right way, Kyle. So you don't care. You mean you want me to learn your way? Yeah. yeah the right way. How did you learn so much, dude? I was, I was born that way. I was born into the post frame life. I was born into the post frame life. I can really adopt it. Yeah. I feel like we put a pretty good afternoon in, boss man. Do you think so? I like this pick. Huh? I said I like this. Got all the framework up. Got our trusses done, purlins done. And and we made it down this side wall with our fascia and our tails. I think this site's gonna work out quite well. We'll find out when we get over on this other side. Pretty dang calm, you can hear probably there's like zero wind. Now you can start to see the uh, layout of the porch. The way that 412 pitch comes down, that's the, uh, the one side of the gable roof that's coming out and it's gonna come straight out at us. It's looking really good.